Hello, God bless you. Hope everyone is having a great day today. This is Brother David. Today we have a beautiful scripture. We're in the book of Psalms, chapter 36, verse 9, which says, For with thee is the fountain of life, in thy light shall we see light. God is the source of physical life and also spiritual life. The Lord is the source and sustainer of all light and life. If we look at all the elements that are mentioned in the verse, we see that this is a symbol of Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. And if we have Jesus in us, then we have light and life. David had praised God for his mercy and gifts to mankind. The greatest of these blessings is the offer of salvation. David praises the Lord for his fountain of life. And being the giver of light, fountains and other images of moving water were used in the Bible with connection to life. Light is a biblical idea of truth, goodness, and knowledge. The Gospel of John reveals clearly that Jesus came into the world to give life and light to those who believe on him. Believers in Jesus do not walk through life blindly. Believers follow Jesus who guides them as surely as the pillar of fire that guided Israel by night in the desert. We need light to see things that are in this world, and we also need the light of the Lord to see things that are in the Lord's world. You see, when you look at a fountain, and you think about the Lord being our fountain of life, providing for us and sustaining us, and this is like an image of the water, the river that comes from the throne of God, as described in Ezekiel and Revelation. The Lord is the one who gives us our very life. He is our sustainer of life. And when we walk in his light, we'll be able to see in circumstances, hard times that we're going through, when it feels like we'll never see light again, and when it feels like we're just going through something so difficult that we can't find the light at the end of the tunnel, we need to rely on his light and remember that he's with us. He's guiding us out. And with his light, we will see light. I use this image a lot, this word picture. You know, Throughout the Bible, there's different ways that they say of someone who walks in darkness can't see where they're going. And for those of us nowadays with street lights and everything, it's kind of hard to imagine exactly what they're talking about. But if you walk into a big, thick forest where the trees are so thick that you can't see any street lights, you can't see the stars above you, it's so thick that it's just complete blackness. That's the closest we can come to how it was when they wrote this, because they didn't have street lights and things of that sort that we do now. But when you're walking in complete darkness, you could you could even describe it as a dark room. There's no windows in that room. This room is completely dark. You don't see what's coming. Something can be on the floor that you could trip on. You may come to the wall before you know it. But the best, best way I could think to say this is a personal testimony for me. When my mom passed away five years ago, September 5th, 2019. There was just so much going on just with her death alone and then other things that happened that it just felt like darkness was trying to overcome. You know, this this sadness, this stress, this shock. And it was coming on so strong that it, you know, it was like this was trying to take everything away. And if it wasn't for the Lord guiding me out of that, then the enemy would have, as Jesus said, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And I think when I was going through that, that's exactly what the enemy was trying to do. He was trying to take me away from the Lord, trying to make me doubt that the Lord's with me and guiding me. And he may makes you may be experiencing something like that where yourself right now. You're going through something right now, and the enemy's putting these thoughts in your mind. You're never going to overcome this. Will make you question your faith, question everything. But we need to rely on our fountain of life, the one who gives and sustains our life. We need to rely on Him to light our path, to direct us out of this trial that we're going through so we got to put our complete faith and trust in him knowing that he is going to be right here and even when it looks like it's the darkest we have him the light of the world and he will bring us out we just got to put our faith and trust in him and it can be hard at times because our flesh wants to doubt we just trust that he's got us in the palm of his hand but before you can put your trust in him to get you through whatever you're going through you have to know him first and this is why we share the gospel at the end of our video. So if you've gotten to this point of the video today and you don't know Jesus, and maybe you don't want to know him, maybe you're playing games with God today, maybe you intellectually know who Jesus is and you know what he did on the cross. But when hard times come, you don't run to Jesus for help because you don't know him personally. You don't take the time to talk to him, to get to know him, to pray, to read the Bible. Well, I believe you're here for a reason. 
If you're not here by accident listening to this video, I believe the Lord's giving you one more opportunity to get to know him today. And this may be your last opportunity. Because we don't know what tomorrow holds. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. This is why I want to introduce you to Jesus right now. I want to show you who Jesus is, what Jesus is wearing the cross, and what that means for you. So listen to the words. Don't turn the video off just yet. Just keep listening. Accept the words of the gospel of what Jesus did for you. Apply the words to your life and allow the words to change you. The gospel in a nutshell is because of the fall from Genesis chapter 3. Sin entered the world and sin creates a wall that separates all of us from God. And this is because all of us sin and fall short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death. Which means because we sin, not one of us is worthy of going to heaven. There is a punishment for sin. And because we sin, we all deserve to be punished. We all deserve to be eternally separated from God, which means we all deserve to be in hell. But here is the mercy of God. He loves you so much that God sent his only son, Jesus, who left his throne in heaven and became a flesh and blood human 100%, fully God and fully man. And Jesus lived a perfect sinless life. And on the cross, he became sin for us to pay for our sins, which means when Jesus was on the cross, he put our sins on himself like a garment. Jesus took the punishment for our sins, because as I've said, there is a punishment. But we are the ones who sin. We are the ones who deserve to be punished. But instead of us being punished for our sins, Jesus, who was innocent of death because he never sinned, he took our punishment, the punishment we rightly deserve. Jesus took that punishment in our place. You see, we're all like a garment that is stained with sin. But when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when you accept the words of the gospel, when you apply the words of your life and allow the words to change you, and it's like you're put in a washing machine. You're washed clean with the precious blood of Jesus. You're washed white as snow. And when you believe the gospel message and are saved, then you put on Jesus' righteousness like a garment. And now when God looks at you, he doesn't see your sin anymore. Now God sees Jesus. The gospel message is Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and he rose again from the dead on the third day. And if you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you will be saved. Whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved and saved from what? Saved from eternity in hell. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by him. Jesus is the only way to get into heaven. Jesus is the door to enter heaven. There are not multiple ways that you can get into heaven and no one else can save you. A preacher cannot deem me worthy. Your mom or dad can't confess that you be a good person. Your works, your deeds cannot earn it. Salvation cannot be found in anyone else or anywhere else. Salvation can only be obtained by faith in Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus' blood on the cross is the ticket. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. And on the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins. He took our punishment. And Jesus' blood is what bought our ticket into heaven. Jesus' blood is what covered our sin that past, present, and the future. And Jesus' blood is what broke down the wall that separates us from God. Jesus' blood is what redeemed us, bought us back, paid the ransom to free us from the power of sin, to free us from eternity in hell. So if you sincerely believe in Jesus and surrender your life to him, which means you're not just saying words, not trying to please someone, not looking for a get out of hell free car, but you really do believe in who Jesus is and what Jesus did for you on the cross, and you truly want to live from now, then you will be saved. This is Jesus' free gift of grace that he is extending to you right now. All you have to do is reach out and grab it. Just accept it today. Because you can't earn your way to heaven, you can't be a good enough person, you can't do enough good deeds. And when you stand before God, it's not going to matter how much you've given to charity. Or that you think, I've been a good person all my life, i never robbed or killed anybody. Because our works, our deeds are not good enough to get us into heaven. It is by grace that we are saved through faith. Not of ourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, the same way should boast. This grace is an unearned gift. We cannot earn it, we do not deserve it, which means we cannot earn our way to heaven. We don't deserve to go to heaven. We don't deserve salvation. We don't even deserve for Jesus to come down for us. But God loves us so very much that by his grace he made a way for us to be saved. He made a way for us to have fellowship with him. So accept Jesus' free gift of salvation that preaching it into heaven today. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Accept the words of the gospel that you just heard. Apply the words to your life and allow the words to change you. And we always follow the gospel with a dire warning of Jesus' imminent return because right now you can personally know Jesus for yourself. But one thing is for sure, and the Bible is clear. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. We need to turn to Jesus today. You do not have time to keep putting Jesus off. So if you don't know Jesus personally, please take the time to get to know him today while you still have the time. Because tomorrow may be one day too late. So whatever excuse you may be telling yourself right now why you haven't came to Jesus yet. Maybe you're waiting until your children grow up and move out. Maybe you're waiting until you're financial secure in your life. Maybe you don't think you're good enough, son. You don't know what I've done. But whatever excuse it may be that you're telling yourself right now, do not put Jesus off any longer, because there is no guarantee 
that you will live to see tomorrow. And if you die before you come to Jesus, then when you stand before God, it's going to be too late to make excuses why you haven't came to Jesus before. So turn to Jesus today while you still the time. Today is the day of salvation. So if you'd like to be saved, we have in the description box a link to the ABCs of Salvation and a sample prayer, but these are just templates and outline of what you can say to be saved. It is not a repeat after me. There are no magic words to be saved. In fact, these words are not even important. But if you want to be saved, it just needs to be a sincere prayer, a sincere cry out from your heart that you cannot do this on your own, that you need a Savior. And what you're doing is admitting you're a sinner in need of a Savior, in need of Jesus. You believe in who Jesus is and what he did for you on the cross. You repent of your sins, which means you're turning away. You're having a change of heart, a change of mind. And whatever you may be battling right now, if you trust in the Lord and let him, you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, accept the words of the gospel, apply the words of your life and allow him to change you, allow him to change you, and he can take away whatever you're struggling with if you're letting it. Well, I pray you got something out of this video, but never take my word for it and don't seek anybody else's advice. Go to the source for yourself because no one on this earth has the answers, whether it's the most famous preacher or the smartest person in the world. They do not have the answers that you're looking for. Only God does, and you will only receive your answer through prayer and by reading the Bible. And it is so very important to read the Bible for yourself. Just picking random verses, doing the Google search, listen to someone read or preach for a few minutes. You will not get the full picture, and they won't even scratch the surface of what is in the Bible. So read and discover the stories for yourself. You see, the Bible will strengthen you and it'll help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, struggle, whatever hard time you may be going through right now. In the description box, we have several links to read the Bible for yourself. The Bible is our roadmap, our GPS, our lantern, our flashlight, or whatever analogy you want to use. But you see, the Bible will help you to navigate this crazy, ever-darkening world that we're living in right now. So read the Bible for yourself. And if you need prayer today, Please reach out to us. We want to stand in agreement and pray for your needs. Or if you have a praise report, please share it with us. We would love to praise Jesus right along with you for what the Lord is doing in your life. Well, I pray you got something out of this video today. If you did, give God glory. I cannot wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow if the Lord tarries. Or we'll see you in the clouds. Look up. Our redemption is drawing nigh. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. Let's go.